So today we are at the coaching event at Jumuya Hotel in Kisumu, a uh, coaching event that we set up to have for two days, uh, today and tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. And um, I just wanted to talk about how the thought came about. Um, so the first time it came across my mind to do a coaching course was uh, I wanted all the volunteers at Tunza to be able to to coach at some point when the need arises. Uh, this is because we are short of coaches. As we expand, we need more coaches. And a lot of the volunteers uh, are sports people. 90% play hockey. However, they don't coach. So I felt like um, besides the key thing that made them join Tunza with their different capacities and career paths, um, it seemed really an addition, an advantage to them and to Tunza that they could help coach at one point or the other. So the first thought was to set up something small, you know, and uh, coach our volunteers. And in addition to that, uh, the next thought came, you know, well, if you're coaching the volunteers, what about the coaches who are asking if they can join Tunza? So we have some high school coaches who've been asking if they can join Tunza as coaches and you know during the holidays they can come and coach with us you know doing tournaments uh, but some of these coaches are not really up to par with the game um, no offense to the high school coaches but the the experience they have is just coaching in high school and with no background of of ever coaching or playing the game at a high level and so I thought it was prudent that we should bring them up to speed by having this coaching event. Um, and so, I first of all appreciate that all of you are here today to learn about hockey. And meanwhile, we also have two guests from Samburu Girls Foundation. Uh, these are people who never knew what game hockey is. So we have, uh, she's called Sisi, Simitia, Simitia and then Anne. And then we have uh, Liberina here. We've come all the way from Saburu. Also, is so much interested in hockey. Hi, my name is Nixon Nyangaga. Um, uh, I play coach level one and uh, as a hockey coach for club, national team, all those stuff. First of all, I'm excited of the number of people who came and the diverse uh, group of people who came for this workshop. And I and I hope that everybody comes out with something that they can take back to the students that they coach or any team that they coach out there. Uh, whether it's the basics, and then uh, this, I would really encourage them to go for more this, more of these uh, clinics, more of these courses, and we'll really move us to the next step. I think it's high time that we need to move this step, this game of hockey, uh, to a different level. I know that you are here to, to learn how to call this hockey, but the real purpose of things I want to leave here with is that we try to get into the a community and try to solve or raise awareness of what is happening in that community. So social change, education, poverty education, happiness. When kids play sports, they are happy. When kids are happy, parents are happy, teachers are happy. It's a happy village. Happiness improves livelihoods. Um, we really believe that. And then the cultural pra practices that are going on in our communities, the teen marriages, child labor, L FGM, um, other things that are not here, alcoholism, you know, ruining people's family finances. So we, when we go to a location, a site, we are trying to figure out what is happening in that community that we can raise awareness for. We might not be able to solve the problem, but if we bring to light, maybe the government can, or activists or other NGOs can come in. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good clinic we are having here. Uh, I'm very impressed by the, the turnout. It really shows that uh, people really want to get this knowledge. We are all learning, we are all doing something new, but it's for the good of the game that we all love. And uh, I hope this can be done and be replicated in all the counties and all the regions. Uh, and probably next year, next year we should do it uh, before the, the school games begin. My name is Elmada Calvin Otien. I'm a Chief yes, Operations Officer for Tunza Sports Academy. We are here today at Jumuya in Kisumu, hosting uh, coaches from different schools in the country. We have a workshop with them, trying to teach them uh, 
the best ways and techniques of coaching so that we have a better team coming forward in hockey. Uh, we've had a good turnout and uh, we are glad that uh, to see the impact that they've done in the society and hope that they will do more as from this workshop. Going forward, we are looking to have uh, some uh, having more of this workshop, maybe annually. So we are hoping that this one will in turn help our kids that are in high school right now uh, to play better sports. I want to hear from you. What do you want to expect uh, out of this clinic by tomorrow evening? My name is Diana Kiruma. I come from Samuel Girls, assistant coach. Okay. I have had the opportunity to attend the Twitter workshop uh, training. And I, I have a few expectations from this particular workshop. One, I'd like to get the right skills so that when you go back to school, you train our young girls on how to remember the game. Two, I also have expect that uh, we can get the opportunities maybe to get a notification and uh, be referees in future games. Three, to know how we can deal with the stiff competition that is ahead of us, that is uh, from what I saw from the previous games. As Sinyolo girls, we managed to go to the regionals where we were beaten by Nyamira who proceeded to the national tender. It was not easy. So we also had the opportunity to watch various games from various schools and the competition ahead of us is very, very stiff. So we have attended this training to make sure we can uh, get new skills, new ways of competing in future given the competition that we can see ahead of us. Now let's talk about the scale of the game of hockey. What was the biggest skill uh, that challenged your, the people you coach? Knowledge in part on right skills. Fitness. Fitness, excellent. That's, that's, that's my area that I enjoy. Fitness. Yeah. Some sort of video or something? Yeah. Yes, aerial ball, same thing as. Yeah, let us say. Okay, thank you. Then we're gonna we're gonna start with the very basics of the equipment that we use for so on top of that, the master of skills can add uh, uh, to the right knowledge. When kids start playing hockey, this is what they do. They want to turn the whole body. It's so cumbersome. But if the right hand is flexible, it means I can move the ball very fast. And it's so easy to move around also. The left hand stays in position, right hand can always move. Maybe you can have one person to show us how to hold the stick. The index finger. Right uh, I'm Evelyn Atiambo Ginga, hockey coach at Mary Vanilla Girls. As I attend this workshop, I'm expecting to be updated on the current uh, trends in hockey, which ultimately I hope to use to move my team to the next level. Thank you. Now, we're going to the heat. So, this goes here. So, this is also not right. All the girls, all the girls are doing this in high school. About 95%. This is not good. Many players are going to master this skill and the position also where the ball is because some try to put it too close to their feet. When the ball is too close to your feet, you can't hit it. So you try to put the ball at some good distance and the grip, as I said, tight and tight. It's tight and tight. And then take the swing. You find that in most schools, especially girls, they want to swing the ball over the head, they stick over the head first before they hit the ball. And then after hitting the ball, they still follow through. That makes the game dangerous. When you want to take a hit, just use your shoulders nicely, face the way the ball you want it to go, and just swing it from here. So it took, it took months of planning. And during those months, um, I really started having a lot of more ideas. For example, um, Tunza is expanding. Our first cohort is in Form 3. And we have Form 2s, we have Form 1s, we have Grade 8, 7. 
those about to go into high school and we are sending these kids to different schools now and those schools I'm um, sorry to say they don't have bona fide coaches and um, I find that sometimes when we meet these kids after a year they have regressed you know what we taught them either they've forgotten or they've included some bad habits into it and so I was thinking how do we retain the skills how do we help the, the players retain the skills they've acquired when we are training them or even build onto that get better and the only answer to that for me was make sure that the schools that we send them to are keeping up with the with coaching the right techniques and right skills can someone tell me when a forward is you that use a bit anytime yes uh Douglas. when scoring when scoring excellent anybody else as a forward we're just passing to another another person on the field. Passing the ball. Passing the ball, great. What, when does a defender use the hit? What? Louder? What we're saying when clearing the ball, when you're clearing the court, come out of the defense, get out of a press. Passing the ball, it's a technique that we need to teach this kid. Hockey is not just about hitting and dribbling. The best thing to do as a team is to pass the ball around. When you pass the ball around, there's a way you hold the stick also, and you have to look up. The stick, you must hold it firmly and be able to pass with a forearm. myself forward. So one, I've given myself this length here and then the length of the stick. If I'm beaten, if the opponent like push the ball here, I'm able to come back, still cover, recover my position. A flat stick tackle, always try to put the, the striker or the attacker on your right side. So it's easier to go low and down. And always try to go low. My name is Eva Sumitian from Sambro Girls Foundation. Uh, I expect after this workshop to have a good platform of training our girls perfectly. Uh, we can empower them through Uki. It's a sport that it's not in some way, it's something new. And the situation our girls are in, they really need sports to get their minds off the uh, problems that they are undergoing. So I hope by the end of this workshop I'll have something to carry home. My expectation is that this training will positively impact us through the skills we are going to learn and we, we will be going back exactly to transform the community through what we've learned here. So it's an it's my expectation that at the end of this training session I'll have something to carry back to the community and teach them. Perfect. So these are correct box this side for this one, but not everyone boxes the right way. The left is boxed this way. So when you meet the person in the ring, you're not going to start thinking how do I box this person? You stay with your skill. Okay? You stay like you said master and put them so now we the stick. So he's holding the stick on the wrong side. He's my my footwork has to stay the same. Put him on my strong side. I worry about me. I don't worry about. Him. He's coming this way. I know. He's coming this way. I move. I tackle the same way. If you start changing, you're not going to make it. Stay with what you know and stay. Put the person always on your strong side. You already know he's a lefty. Approach them with that mentality. Because even if he's lefty and he's going to hit this way, which is the, the light hitting this way, you can't. Yeah, this is the strongest hit. Stay. This is, you know, going to start changing too.
players at practice. Trust your players. Everyone can move the ball. Everyone in that team can move the ball a bit. So I found, he found me on my foot. Just start right away. I'm human. I'll react. You get a corner. Let that player start right away. My name is Joseph Osino. I'm a goalkeeper's coach. I coach Butali Sugar Hockey Club and uh, women and men national team. Uh, what I'd like to achieve in this workshop is to share the knowledge uh, and my experience from uh, a very, uh, what do you call it, the first stages of learning in uh, upcoming players, giving them the right insight, the right technique and uh, the right methods, the current methods that we use to, to, to better them as uh, goalkeepers. Uh, I intend to make a follow-up after a month or so to check if the concept is getting into the players. Because when you speak and uh, you see no change, that is not progress. When you see your philosophy in young upcoming players, you get to get, you, you feel that you're working on something and uh, your work is not all in vain. He's there, you didn't have enough time to react. I just start here. Most people go through the passage. That is wrong, don't go through the leaflet. Listen, if it's far, see, the fall happened, he's here. And I decide to, he has enough time to move. What I tell my players, they're a corner. They know what that means. I mean, the circle, they know what that means. There's no, there's shoot, there's nothing you put on the foot. He don't go to, see, bang, you do that too. Just do this, put on the foot, get a corner. I tell them, I don't say, hey, I'm going to get No. Get a corner, they get it. So when you're practicing, use the language that we can here, yeah, uh, Fred Orino from uh, Kisi County, uh, Michael uh, Hockey Coach Training. I'm here at Jumia, Kisomo County. I'm here for the training. He's being facilitated by Tunza. And one of the reasons as to why I'm here is to gain the experience and the knowledge concerning this game. It's all about uh, sponsoring and uh, which is based on the gender equality among the girls and empower them, empowering them to participate in this game hockey. So this clinic uh, which commenced today, supposed to take two days, we are supposed to be equipped with so many skills as coach, as uh, guardians to these players and also facilitators in the respective institutions that we know uh, we do come from. So I'm hoping to gain much in terms of leadership, in terms of skills, and in terms of the knowledge concerning this game. Thank you. Any questions or any thoughts you want us to talk about? So a player, a very good player when you come and stand right here, next to the line, holding the stick in this manner. This is how they will be doing. Just right here. Then the other player moves with the ball, looking for the fight. This player will be moving the ball towards the lead and uh, not allowing the ball to get into the lead. Then it keeps on moving towards this other side and then it turns to the ball. Is it wrong if this other player, the defending player, is it wrong if the defending player or the, He's trying to the opponent? Yeah. This person is just walking with this person, approximating on the fight. As the ball really covered fight. When he has actually realized that the ball has seriously covered fight. But then you are assuming that this person is traveling on the circle only. The His question, question is, is, is... The other question you are not going to see. The trick is because it is playing. The player is inside the game. So if I move closer to her, it's a foul against me. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. If, yeah. if where I'm standing, I'm legally allowed. Carol moves the ball again. Is there a foul when I'm not moving? No, no, no. So, when you get back to this other question, immediately, first of all, as a coach, any player who is standing there with the ball just moving, it's waiting for that one, that one is, I should not play that player, that's a lazy player. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to say that. And my name is Kelly Odiambo. Uh, I, I am a teacher by profession. I teach at Migros SD Private School within Kisumu. So I'm here in this workshop uh, learning more about uh, coaching 
So this workshop, uh, my expectation with it was uh, how we can uh, actually start the the, the the skill, the hockey skill and sportsmanship among the very young children that is in primary school. Uh, and uh, as the time going, I think we are, uh, or rather I am finding it more encouraging to see how we can also use this platform to introduce this hockey, hockey skill so that in, in future we can have great hockey players within our country. And also I'm looking forward to from our facilitators of uh, Tunza Sports on how support offers they can give us down in the downer level because uh, uh, we in my region most uh, primary schools almost all uh, don't offer this sport but I think starting from uh, down here will help will uh, help us if uh, it is possible for them to also offer us with some f support facilities like the trendy skates and uh, the appropriate uh, hockey gears to use. And blow the whistle as an umpire. I will blow it. And then the coach will say, what? He's inside the league. I say, he's interfering. That's interfering. Yeah, yeah. I will blow it. Yeah. So, and I can even add a short corner. You understand that? I'll avoid the short corner. Immediately this guy moves one meter and make one step. That's a short corner against that person making the step. This no no will not you're not a But you want the ball to move five. You know what five is? It depends on the interpretation of offense. Because I've, yeah. I've seen it a lot of games. No, 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 no. Then the next time maybe, on the Maybe maybe it is what you're explaining that I'm not understanding. Yeah. So you do? This is not five. No, you do like three, three times. Mm. Three is five. One, two, three. No, 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 no listen. No. The ball must move, move five away yards away from, from, from the, the starting, starting point. point. Five yards away, okay, whatever it is. <laughs> but, but the international players or high level players, once you see them playing like this, is immediately they start the ball and the player gets the one, too close. They're attracting They're trying me. the person to get close so that the foul can still be caught. You know, when I do that, it's immediately. She gets there before I move five meters, depending on the position on the field, they'll call against her. But however, if I do this and get into the tree, a foul against, a foul, a foul against me. I'm Let me give you. Samson some homework. So, Samson, today evening when you're in town, somebody you don't know, just go next to them and walk closely. <laughs> this is going to be the first time that we're involving the public into our thing. We've always done events for Tunza, for us. We never really cared if someone came to watch or to participate. It's always been in-house, whether it's sending off kids to school, whether it's um, having a, a party or for parents or anything. Everything has always been for Tunza inside. And this is, was going to be the first time that we're involving the, another party, outsiders. When a player is cadet, I see it happen in, in, in school. A player is cadet, the coach is here yelling, and the player is there like frustrated and throwing their hands up. What you forget is your two minutes or five minutes will start when you are seated at the bench. So the more time you waste in here, the game is going on, your time is not counting. So you take too much time, you take two minutes to get there. Your green card was two minutes, it means you are out of the game for four minutes. The moment a player is guarded, what they need to do is rush to the bench, sit down, time starts counting. If you keep, but it can work. Oh, but no, 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 no. you are going to be attacked. If the team is disoriented, then you are being attacked. Focus back on coaching. You are human, you will protest. But if it was a decision that they had made, stop complaining. The, the, you just want to create problems for, your, for yourself. Your pressure is getting high. Your players think that now they are entitled. They are not going to play. They are like, this player, this umpire is against us. So what if, even if I play, it's against us. No. Put the right energy to the game. Remember, I'm sorry I didn't have a Especially high school, the umpiring is questionable. <laughs> Just deal with it. Tell your players what to do. Uh, teach your players the right things. Umpire is not blowing five. He's not five. They're not five. They're not five. You keep saying. Please, do not tell your player next time you chop it. Do not do those things. I know it, you feel like you're... But this player is like your daughter or your son. Don't do that. Just tell them, you can tell them, player, player, someone can get injured. The players are not five. My player will hit the ball, someone will get injured. Don't tell your player, you chop it, get a jewel. 
train your captain that they can always go to talk to the empire, not the whole team. I saw that some boys seem all ganging up on the empire. Oh, they want no. Train your captain if there's a question to ask to question. If the goal was on food, captain is the right. It will not change, but empire is again human. If the captain goes respectfully, trust me, at again, if that was intentional, he will be so ashamed not to do it again. And there's all this knowledge in me, like, you know, you feel impregnated with all this knowledge and just hoarding it and keeping it and not sharing it doesn't do anyone any good, doesn't do me any good. It doesn't make me go any further um, and it's not going to help anybody else if I don't share. So that is a very strong reason why I also wanted to hold this, given that I don't have any certification on coaching, education or anything like that. But I have the knowledge, I have the experience, I have witness, I've seen how things are done. And so I wanted to bring that back home and, and bring it to the coaches who are here, who are willing to listen and take something that I can relate to them. So here we are.